Hey everybody. Um, uh, if you follow me on social media lately or you've been paying attention on my YouTube channel, you know I'm obsessed with making um, paper clips. And this is just a sampling of the ones I've made lately stored in this little storage book. Um, generally these ones that are in here are a three inch paper clip, I think. Three. Yeah, they're a three inch paper clip. Um, decorated um, on the front side. These are sort of mixed media assemblage type little works of art. And I've already done a couple of videos on these, how I do the paper clips, um, inspired by Lolly Palooza and people over in her paperclip art Facebook group, which I will link both in the description below, both Lolly's channel and the Facebook group. So I will, I'm not going to show you how to do the paper clips today, but what I am going to show you is how I made this little storage book. I posted the little storage book and I got so many comments on it. And so I'm, I'm going to share with you how I did it. It's actually very, very, very simple. Um, as you can see, it will hold uh, a 16 paper clips. Uh, yeah, 16 paper clips. Um, and these are, again, the three inch paper clips. They're pretty dimensional. I've made some that are more dimensional. <laughs> but these are pretty dimensional and it will hold fairly comfortably 16 paper clips. Does it poke out a little bit? Yes. Um, but I have this elastic hairband that I put here like this and that keeps it nice and closed um, and it fits nicely on the shelf. Now um, this is what it looks like without the paper clips in it. This is one that I haven't put anything in and you can hear it. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been broken in yet. Um, so this is what it looks like. I'm going to show you how I did this. Now you're gonna need a Reader's Digest condensed book. That's what I use to make these, the cover. It's a nice size cover. I remember to grab a ruler. Um, it's a nice size cover that measures um, seven and one, two, three, four, five sixteenths. No, five eighths, sorry. By about five and an eighth to here. And then the spine is about mm, one and three quarters inches ish. One and a half. Let's see. I don't even know. One and a half. So the spine's about one and a half inches. I think that's a good size for not only storing your paper clips, but maybe you're gonna do a swap with somebody. It's kind of a nice thing to fill it up with paper clips and then mail them the whole book full of paper clips. That would be cute. And then you could just store them on your bookshelf. Now, I didn't do anything to the spine. Will I later? Maybe. Um, I kind of like the idea that it's sort of a hidden little collection of artworks on your on your bookshelf. Nobody even knows it's there until they go to pull it off and maybe read, read it and realize there's no book guts in there. It's full of paper clips. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you how I did that. I went back to the thrift store and I got another Reader's Digest condensed book. This is a little, this cover on this one's a little bit different. You can see that these have this fancy paper and this one doesn't have that, which is fine. Um, but the size and the spine are the same. They're the same size. So the first thing you're gonna do when you get your book is you're gonna cut the guts out. So you're gonna need an X-Acto knife or a straight edge. And we are gonna go here. We're gonna, uh, okay, we're gonna go in here and we're going to slice carefully the paper here, lightly, gently. You don't wanna cut through the book spine, you just wanna cut the paper that's holding the book block in, the text block. So just go slow. Pull this, it doesn't hurt to pull the cover back. Okay. 
Just whatever you do, don't cut the spine. There we go. See? The first one's usually the hardest one to get out. Now with the next one, you can just sort of pull all of this business out of your way until you just see the paper. There we go. So if you like to collage with text, or print on text like with your jelly plate, then this comes in handy. If not, and you don't do any of that, then um, you could just put this in your recycle bin. It is paper, so it's recyclable. What we really want is this part. So I'm gonna, let me grab a pair of scissors and I'm gonna clean up this a little bit. Just get rid of some of the straggly bits. There we go. Okay, that's a good start. So now we're gonna take some of this canvas. It's very messy canvas. And we're gonna just cut a piece that is the width here of the spine from fold to fold or crease to crease plus about another inch. So maybe like right there. It's about right. It's not very straight. <laughs> oh, okay. That is not straight in the least little bit. So Straighten that up, shall we? These aren't my fabric scissors and I'm sitting down, which is a funny angle to cut fabric, but there we go. That's better. Okay. Now we want to have it be about the same um, length as this fancy paper inside the book cover. So I want to cut it to about there. You notice I'm not measuring anything, right? I will be, but you can just eyeball this. It's fine. Yeah, that's good. That's close enough. All right. We need a garbage can. Holy cow. Already. We're only like two minutes in. Okay. The next thing we want to do before we do anything else is we're going to fold this piece of fabric in half. Give it a finger press crease and then mark, not with that, use a pen. Darken, the, darken the, the crease with a pen. Then you wanna measure out from that fold um, about a half an inch on either side. Then connect your two, line, two little marks with a straight edge.
okay? And you want the, your piece of fabric to look like that. Set that aside. Okay, now we're gonna get to the pages, the signature. So to make the signatures inside of our paperclip storage book, we're gonna use file folders. These happen to be black file folders. I had them, so I used them. Um, they worked out really well, actually. And you want to cut, okay. So we're gonna cut the main part of the page to seven and a half by five. And we're gonna preserve the fold here. We're gonna preserve that, so that, that part's kind of important. Oops, bump the camera. Okay, so I have this um, cutter, and this is nice because I can set this to seven and a half. I'm going to put the fold of the file folder up against the guide back here. Push it up tight. Push it up square this way. So now we have this. Then we're going to change this to five. And we're gonna put these in. This time our fold is here against this guide. And we're cutting off the extra width. Remember, we're preserving the fold, so don't cut the fold off, it's important. <coughs> so you should be left with something that looks like this. Okay. Then we have those two scraps that have the fold, right? Let's cut those to five. Pres again, preserving the fold. Two, put that down for safety. We have these two bands, and this is what the paper clip slides on. These bands are two inches. So we're gonna move our guide to two inches or thereabouts. We wanna take our short pieces, preserving the fold, and we're gonna basically cut them to two inches. So we have two, I'm sorry, four of these pieces. You want these two pieces, that again are seven and a half by five, and then you want four of these that are five by two. Now, if you're gonna do a tag, um, you could do these the same way, but the positioning on the page and the way you're gonna assemble, it's gonna be a little different, which I will show you. And some of it's gonna depend on how big your tags are. Because you, you could do this with tags. All right, then the next thing we're gonna need is our book cover. Our piece of fabric, our pages and some book binding tools. So I have some cording, just wax cotton cordings, nothing fancy. I'm gonna use my book binding pokey tool and I have a book binding, my favorite book binding needle in here in this little, this is a um, accessory kit that came with a book binding tool that I have but I like keeping my basic book binding tools in here. It, it's very, I've found that it's very handy so all right, now I'm not one for measuring this part. I just go for it, but if you're a measurer, by all means, do that. I'm gonna eyeball this and I'm gonna pick the center, poke a hole. I'm gonna go in about halfway between that center hole and that edge, and I'm gonna poke another hole. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna take this other one and do the same thing. I'm not measuring anything, I'm just eyeballing it. Nobody's going to see this. Nobody's going to know. All right. I'm going to take our cording. Whack off a nice long piece. Thread our needle. I really should put my glasses on for this. 
so I can see what I'm doing, but it'd be a little sharper if I had my glasses. So hang on just one second. Okay, glasses are at hand. Alrighty. So now we're gonna go into the center hole of one of our little folders. And we are gonna line our folder up with our fabric, making sure that any part of it that hangs over the edge on the top and bottom is equal distance from here and here, that they're, they're eyeballed, they're about the same. Again, just eyeball it. You don't have to, I mean, if you wanna measure it, by all means, but you don't have to. So I'm gonna just hold it in place and then I'm gonna use a little binder clip. I also have the fold up against that pen line that I made. I'll show you in just a minute. Okay. So I have that about centered vertically and it's up against that pen line. I've got the needle sticking in the center hole. I'm gonna poke it through the fabric and pull. I'm gonna leave, I don't know, a couple inches, two, three inches on the inside. Then I'm going to pick one of those outside holes and I'm gonna go up through the fabric on the pen line and then through the hole in the paper. There we go. Pull it tight, hold this so it doesn't pull all the way out. Pull it tight though. Then go out the other hole and make sure the needle's going on the pen line. Pull, pull, pull kind of tight. And then go back up into that center hole. This is your basic pamphlet stitch. There we go. So go through the fabric and then I'm gonna put one end of the thread under the center um, string on one side and the tail end on the other side. I'm gonna pull tight and then I'm gonna tie it in a knot once, twice, and then I'm gonna trim it down. There we go. When you're done, it should look like that. So we're gonna do that to the other one and the other one's gonna go over here on this line. So again, we're gonna line it up and this time we have, besides eyeballing the top and bottom space, also make sure that this edge lines up with this paper that you already, the page that you already sewed in. And then hold it down, open it, and use your clips clip everything together. There we go. Repeat the stitching process that you just did the same way. Just like that. Now you have something that looks like this. Yeah? Okay, so before we put it in the book, now we're gonna assemble our page and then put it in the book, which is the opposite of how I did the first two, by the way, but this is easier if you do it this way. So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna need some double stick tape. You could glue this if you don't have double stick tape, but the tape is easier. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. So put a piece on one side on the top and bottom and then along this edge. Push it down. Lift the backing paper up. And 
and then close the other side of the page and push. You've just sealed that knot inside and created a double, um, double strength layer of uh, folder cardstock. So we're going to do the same thing to the other side. This is easier. So you're going to need two of your shorter pieces for each page. You're going to put the fold over this taped together edge and you're going to position it so it's about a half an inch from the top and a half an inch from the bottom approximately. That was pretty good eyeballing on my part. But that won't happen twice. Right there. Push, oops. Push it down pretty firmly and then put a binder clip to hold it in place. Like that. Then We're going to take some more of our double stick tape and we're going to put it on this short end. You probably could do this before you put them on here. Now that I just thought of that, that's probably a smart idea. I think I thought of that when I was making the other two and then I just forgot. Oops. Then once you have the tape on there, press it in good and then remove the backer paper and push it down. Flip it over and do the other side. And you can remove your binder clips and you have a page with two bands on it with, with which you can hold paper clips. Now, if you're going to do tags, then you probably want to put a piece of tape here to hold it on this edge, but then you probably want to put one across the bottom to make it a shallow pocket that you can just slide the tag in. And if your tags are big, then you might only be able to get one band on each page for your tags. So that's an idea I actually had late last night. On these two, let's be smarter about this and let's tape these up now. It's always the last one that doesn't want to come off. There we go. Okay, take your clips off. And now you have something that looks like this. With the bands. Yeah, but now we got to get it in here. So, we are going to glue it in. So this is where you need something like Yes Paste. And you need some, a bun you need four binder clips. Um, the big ones are the best ones, and I use these really only for doing things like this. Three, watch me only have three. That would be like so typical. All right, let me see if I can find one more. Hang on, got some in the spares drawer. Okay, you're gonna need four of these bigger ones. I really only use these for things like this, but they do work really well for it. Um, and you're going to need a really strong glue that doesn't dry too quickly, something like Yes Paste, um, but PVA glue would work, but something that's going to hold this canvas in securely because this canvas is what's holding your signatures in your cover. So you want something that's going to be pretty secure. So we need a palette knife. And my Yes Paste, which I hope I can get open. Ah, oh, yay, hey, that was way too easy. It's usually not that easy. Mine's getting a little bit thick. Uh, yes Paste is water soluble, so I'm gonna put some water in there. Just mix it up a little bit. Just thins it out a little bit, which is fine. Makes it a little easier to spread. So, <coughs> I'm going to spread it on the spine. And about one inch out on each side of the cover, front and back. Now these pages don't have a right side up. 
It could go either way. So when you glue it in, you don't need to be worried about which side is up and which side is down. It doesn't matter. I have a wet, wet rag or a baby wipe handy. This paste is really sticky and you can wipe off what gets out everywhere. I'm really, okay, there we go. So now we are going to take our signature, signatures, our pages, and we are going to eyeball it. Again, we're eyeballing it, lining it up with the middle. Yes, paste takes a long time to dry. So if you don't get it placed exactly right the first time, it's totally fine. This is where, before you get too far into it, do yourself a favor and put at least one of these on each page so they don't fall down and get pasty and icky. I'm gonna grab a clean palette knife and I'm gonna push the canvas into the paste. on both sides. Any parts that seem like they don't have enough paste, there's nothing underneath there. You can grab a little bit and put it under there. Okay, and I can do this and check. It looks pretty good. That looks, let's see, can't see. I think that looks pretty good. Push, push, push it into the glue. This takes a long time to dry, so once you get to this point, you're gonna to wanna to let it set overnight to dry because it's gonna take a while to dry. Before you set it aside and just let it dry, you want to take a baby wipe and wipe away any glue that's sticking out anywhere. If you've gotten some on your pages, wipe it off before it dries. It, it won't stay sticky once it dries. That's how you know it's dry all the way with Yes Paste. It's not sticky anymore. While it's wet, supremely sticky stuff. If you've worked with it before, you know exactly what I mean. So just take your baby wipe like this and wipe away any Yes Paste that's just out in a place where it shouldn't be. Okay? Then take your other two binder clips and put them like this. And it, uh, they'll, what they're just doing is they're acting as a temporary stand for the pages to hold the pages upright while everything dries. Once it dries, you're good to go and you are good to, see a little bit of glue. You're good to store your paper clips or fill it up with paper clips and share them with a friend. So once it's dry, it'll look like this. And then you can fill it up with your clips and you're good to go. It's exactly how I made this one. So I hope that gives you some ideas of what you can do to store your paper clips and or share them. I think it's a cute idea and these little, these books aren't so big that they take up a ton of room in your library or your art space. They are just the perfect size, I think. So that's all for today. If you want to join Lolly's um, Facebook group or watch her YouTube channel and see what she's doing um, in regards to art and her paper clips, I will link both in the description below. I am so excited by her group. It's keeping me um, very inspired right now and I don't see me stopping making paper clips or tags anytime soon. It did lead to me making art tags which is something I've done before, 
um, but I had set aside for a while and her paper clips re-inspired that. So I'm doing both at the moment. Um, and, but it's a lot of fun. So I will probably be selling the one that is full of paper clips. I am going to go through and sign said paper clips, which I haven't done yet, and listing it in my Etsy shop. If you're interested, um, DM me uh, either um, you can use my email address which is in uh, the description of the video or you if you're friends with me on Facebook or over in one of the art groups with me you can message me on Facebook um, and ask me about it I have not listed it yet and I have to take the paper clips out and sign them all um, but I will probably be selling that I'm continuing making paper clips and I do let go of them reluctantly but because I love them but I do think I'm going to sell that. I may sell these two extra covers too so again if you're interested let me know DM me. Um, what else? If you want to follow me on social media and see what paper clips I'm making or tags or whatever other creative things I'm getting up to every day um, or support the free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups you can definitely do that and I welcome that um, click on the link tree list of links in the description below and when you do that you're gonna find a whole bunch of places where you can find me on the internet so check that out don't forget to like share and subscribe go over to Lolly Blues's channel and show her some love and that's it for today go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later Bye, guys.